Hey guys, this is Michael Tarallo with Click. In this video, I will introduce you to a concept known as the Master Calendar, which can be used with both ClickView and ClickSense. A Master Calendar is simply a table that contains a time period and time attributes that you define, linked to your existing data. If you are unable to analyze data by different time dimensions using your existing data set, or have noticed time gaps when creating charts and other visualizations, the Master Calendar will solve these problems. Before we begin the creation of the Master Calendar, I wanted to show you our online help where you can search for time functions, and you can see a variety of functions available to help you take in an existing date parameter and expose its different component parts, such as seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, etc. We're going to use those when we create the Master Calendar, but I wanted to briefly show you how you can use those with your existing data as well. So over in ClickSense, now the same thing that I perform here is also applicable to ClickView. I have ClickView up and running in the background, and if need be, I will go over to it and show you how it's done within that product, if it's slightly different. In this case here, I have a app called Sales Analysis. And off screen, I have some data in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. In this case, it's orders data. So I'm going to drag that and drop it right onto the location here to load that data. And you can see I have a column here called order date. We're just going to load that. And then what we're going to do is go directly into the sheet and go into edit mode. Inside the file list, I'm going to grab the order date field just to show you how the dates display inside the list. And you'll notice it jumps from one to three then we have 4, 5, and then it skips 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Because what happens here is that the date is representing the sales transactions that have occurred, and that's when the date has been entered. But if we were to chart this on a time series, such as a line chart, you would have missing dates, which makes it difficult to analyze data, especially when you're trying to look for trends. So think of it this way. When you plan your activities, do you use a calendar that has missing dates or only displays activity for the things that you have scheduled. Of course not. So having that additional time information, whether activity occurs or not, provides perspective and allows one to plan accordingly. The other thing you'll notice about this data set is we don't have the year or month or quarter or other time dimensions or attributes here. So what I'm going to do is show you how we can add those to the existing data set. Now this can be done a few ways, but I'm going to do it within the data load editor. The other way it can be done is within the master items within ClickSense. In ClickView, they can be defined within the chart expressions themselves as calculated dimensions, or you can put them in the load script. So there is the orders script that is generated by the drag and drop. You'll notice the order date field. I'm going to use the year function like I showed you in the beginning available in the help and I'm going to fill it with the parameter of a real field, in this case, order date, and then alias it with the name year. And then I'm going to repeat that for month. Okay, and then I'm going to reload this data set. Go back to our edit mode in our sheet, and now we will have our month as well as our year. Okay, now I want you to take note of one other thing. When I go into my view mode, and I select 2015, you'll notice that October is highlighted in dark gray, which is showing that it's not associated with the rest of the data set or it's not related to the selection. In this case, it's missing. And understand that using a master calendar is really a personal preference depending on how you're going to analyze your data. You might be completely fine with not having all of the consecutive dates, missing dates, or time dimensions uh, in your data set. But if you do need those dates, you can see here, if you needed to represent October within a line chart, it would not display. And that's simply because in 2015, there weren't any October sales. Now understand the power of green, white, and shades of gray, that kind of helps visually indicating that, oh, there were no sales in October, I didn't know that. But again, understand, depending on how you analyze and display your information, it will vary based off the use case. Okay, so I just showed you two functions, year and month, and how I use them in the load script. What we're going to do next is we're going to now incorporate the master calendar. Okay, so to incorporate the master calendar, I'm back in the load script, and what I'm going to do here is we're just going to comment out the two time attributes we created with the functions year and month. 
And then we're going to create a new section for the load script, and we're just going to call it calendar. And then I'm going to switch over to my notepad where I have a load script that contains the syntax to create the calendar. I'll copy that, and then we're going to paste it in. So let me describe some of the sections of this load script. It might look daunting to you, but it's actually not. This exercise, again, is really going to be a cut and paste and edit exercise and allow me to go through each of these sections just so you have a better understanding of what is happening under the covers. So these labels right here just indicate the type of tables. These are going to be working tables to basically create the master calendar table at the end. So this first table here creates the quarters. It basically auto-generates 12 months and then associates a Q and a number 1, 2, 3, and 4, concatenates them together, and you get Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And it's associated with the appropriate months, 1 through 12. This next section here takes your order date. So this is where you would edit your existing date field that is in your data set. So order date is in my data set. This basically takes the min and the max order dates and creates a structure from a table defined with the label orders. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy that, go back to my data, in this case my orders data, and I'm going to put that label right above the top of my load script and put a colon there. So what that's going to do is basically structure this loading of this data piece as a table called orders. And then what we're doing here is we're defining a couple of variables, basically to create the range to fill in, within the next section, all of the missing dates. And that's what this temp calendar section is. This creates another internal table here that takes the variables that are defined above, it goes through an iteration process, and auto-generates all of the dates from the min all the way up to the max. And then finally, we have the master calendar section. And this is utilizing those time and date attribute functions that you saw earlier in the help section. So what we do is we take the temp date, which is created from above from the uh, temp calendar, and then we rename it back to our date field because that is the real field that it's going to basically link the master calendar to, the field of order date. Then we use some functions, week, year, month, day, all on those temp dates, and we create aliases or names that we want to give them. Uh, an apply map basically just performs a lookup. Here what we're doing is getting the month from that temp structure and we're matching it to the appropriate quarter, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and then we have a couple of weak functions. And then resident basically just means reuse the existing table we've already loaded, we order the data, and then we drop the temporary table structure. And that's basically all that's to it. So now when we load this data, what it's going to happen is the order date that we've created is going to link to the order date in my orders. So let's show you that. I load the data. We go to the data model viewer. And then there is my orders table. And there is my master calendar linked on order date. OK, so let's take a look at the result of our load. Uh, you can see in our field list, we now have year, week, year, weekday, quarter, month, etc. Our time attributes defined from that master calendar. And you can see in our order date list that the values have uh, filled in appropriately. Before we had our missing values, now all of the values are correct for the appropriate month. And at the same time, if I go into a view mode and I select 2015, you can now see that October is no longer missing because it is part of the associated data model within the, the master calendar. If we go back into edit mode and make a couple of adjustments and let's put in our uh, line chart and we'll use our dimension of month and a measure of sales. And now you can see that October shows zero sales, where prior October was missing. OK, so that's an example of some of the time attributes that you could use within the master calendar. Again, utilizing those time and date functions, you can develop your own. For example, if your fiscal uh, calendar starts at a different date range, you can define that um, basically any way you wish. Uh, one last tip I'd like to share with you before we go is 
if you're trying to understand how to utilize, let's say, begin and end dates, you very easily can do that by utilizing a list that has your order dates and then take advantage of the filter search that uh, comes within those lists. And then you can utilize a variety of operators such as less than, equal, and greater than. So let's say I want to look at a date range that includes the 1st of January 2015 all the way up to the 10th of January 2015. So what I can do is say give me every value. So just for video purposes I'm just going to start typing in what I want my start date to be which will be 1 slash 1 slash 2015. And you can see how it highlights the selection. So I want that to be included and also greater than that. So I'm going to use a greater than symbol and equal. Okay, so that's going to include that first date of January. And then at the end of this, what I want to do is now add the additional operator to complete the range. So I would say less than or equal to 1 slash 10 slash 2015. And then you can see I have the appropriate start and end date or begin and end date. I hit enter. And then it gives me those selections. If I want to go back into edit mode, and we're just going to grab our order date and I'll replace month. You can now see the date range appropriately within the line chart. And that also goes for the other list boxes. If I wanted to say anything that was greater than 2013, you can see that is appropriate. And then even with textual values, I could use a separated list of text values. Um, I could even use wildcards, for example, if I just want to say, give me every month that ends in R, for example, that's in this list. So I use an asterisk and the letter R. Um, you can check out our help for other techniques within the filter search. Uh, they'll give you uh, a list of operators and uh, appropriate text syntax to put in there, if applicable. So to continue your learning experience, Make sure to visit our education webpage at click.com forward slash training for details on our latest training, certifications, and skill assessments. Also, don't forget you can quickly get started with ClickSense by viewing other videos such as this on the Click community as well as from the Click Online help. If you are watching this video from YouTube, make sure to click on any of the links in the video or its description to be brought to other videos or pages where you can see how to download and use ClickSense Desktop or learn more about ClickView and the other ClickSense products. Thanks for watching.